background is neurosurgery, and uh, I practiced that for a long time. And uh, since 2015, I have lived full time in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, working at WHO, um, where I run the program in emergency and essential surgical care uh, within the Department of uh, Service Delivery and Patient Safety. You spoke briefly about uh, the fact that you work now with the World Health Organization and have done that since 2015, uh, but what did it take to get to that point? And um, I guess starting from maybe college, can you briefly walk us through the, the steps that your route has taken there? Sure. Medical school finished, went to neurosurgery training, finished, um, practiced for a couple of years, then I went and did a fellowship mm -hmm. at UCLA. What was that in? Uh, cerebral vascular surgery. Okay. And, um, that involves some skull based techniques. And uh, so, and I was very happy with an academic career in neurosurgery um, and would have still been doing it, except I uh, developed a, a nerve injury in my hand, mm -hmm. started dropping instruments, and I'm right handed, so mm -hmm. that's really very bad to drop instruments in the brain or spinal cord. So um, I had to quit operating and I was, I had gone to China as visiting professor several times. I'd mm -hmm. gone to Africa to, for some projects and um, so I thought, well, I guess I can get an MPH and maybe find some international health career and whatnot. And um, medical school departments aren't real interested in you hanging around if you're not bringing money into them. So uh, so I really didn't have anything to do and so I got an MPH just to see what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, just by, I mean seriously it was by chance. I went and heard a lecture when I was an MPH student on surgery as a global health issue. And it was at least to my memory, the only epiphany I ever had that the the lights just came on. It was I know academic surgery and you know training and research and all those types of things, and I'm learning about public health. And this is actually a career that I could do. This this is you know there's an open door, and there was so little being done um, that I would just read everything I could get on it and would mm -hmm. just cold call authors and say, well, what about this? What about that? How do you get involved with this? And uh, some there were some very, very kind people that guided me to um, here and there. And it was just a several series of, uh, of happenstances, if you believe in happenstances, or it was more than coincidence, just one person after the next and led me to working at WHO um, as kind of an old intern, but I went and spent a summer there with the person that preceded me and um, just loved it and traveled around and got involved with it more and more. And then they finally, when she retired, they asked me if I'd be interested in coming and taking over. Mm -hmm. So that's how that happened. But it was, you know, initially I was, you know, screaming and yelling and, and not wanting to pursue another career. Right. Um, so you mentioned kind of from the beginning of your career, you've spent some time abroad. You went to China, and you've been, and you worked in some other countries as well. Mm -hmm. What uh, was drawing you to those places, and um, why did you choose to spend your time uh, doing that as opposed to other things? Um, just a tremendous need. I mean, I went, and when I went to China, I went to a, a neurosurgery training program where they didn't do the things that I did. So I, I brought equipment with me, I spent time with the residents, and I, I uh, did teaching, I did, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the residents, take them through cases, uh, the chief residents, how to put clips on aneurysms, things like that, and um, it was just because of the need. Mm -hmm.